if we were designing our school systems from scratch, what would they look like? Since leaving the Florida governor's office in 2007, education reform, more than any other single issue, has become Jim Bush's signature effort. It's going to require a big political fight. Monopolies do not go quietly into the night. And in that fight to take education out of the hands of government, Bush started a nonprofit foundation, created a national initiative, and brought together education officials in an advocacy group. They support opening state education budgets to privately run virtual schools. And they want to offer students more choice through digital and online learning. But critics say it's really just a boon for education companies looking to cash in on the taxpayer dollars spent on K-12 education, a figure now up to $789 billion a year. What Bush has done is combine both business and politics in pushing education reforms that benefit a small number of for-profit education firms. Some of these firms are um, some of the worst actors in education today, actually underperforming some of the worst public schools. For-profit firms like K-12 Inc., the largest operator of online public schools in the country, can now be found in 34 states and the District of Columbia. The enrollment and revenues for these firms have nearly quadrupled since 2008. Yet K-12-run schools have consistently recorded test scores and graduation rates below state averages. And in the past year, they've lost management contracts or been threatened with school shutdowns in five states. Like any other corporation, the bottom line is actually the thing that they are most concerned with. And in many instances, the bottom line conflicts with what we consider good education. Despite the industry's mixed outcomes, experts say nobody's been more instrumental in making online learning big business than Jeb Bush. If Jeb Bush holds a meeting, people are going to come. The effort to influence policy is far more than lobbying and campaign contributions. It's access. Bush and his foundation sit at the center of a complicated web of money and policy. Take the state of Maine as an example, which began considering privately run virtual schools in 2011. Companies like K-12 Inc. donated money to fund Bush's Education Foundation, which in turn funneled favorable policy to the then State Education Commissioner Stephen Bowen, a member of Bush's Chiefs for Change group. K-12 and Bowen were also both members of the American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC. It's a controversial organization that unites corporations with government officials to produce industry-friendly model legislation. It is a joy to be here with ALEC. Uh, I am, uh, this is a place, the fountainhead for a lot of really important ideas. ALEC officially adopted Bush's education reform agenda back in 2011, and that same year, several ALEC bills that allowed privately run public schools passed in Maine's State House. Jeb Bush declined comment and stepped down from his position as chairman of his foundation earlier this year to focus on his political run. Stephen Bowen also declined comment. But K-12 Inc. says many of its schools have shown demonstrated gains in achievement and that below average test scores can be attributed to a disproportionate amount of low income students and those already underperforming at other schools. Still, analysts say Bush's role in expanding corporate-run schools could prompt some voters to give him a failing grade. When you look at the words for-profit and you put them before things that didn't really have to do with profit, you see for-profit education at, at a, an elementary and high school level. Uh, that in and of itself is saying, okay, here's a robber baron to some people. Here's somebody who's trying to capitalize on things that should not be about capital, that should not be about making money. And that is one of the problems that Mitt Romney had in 2012, and it's one of the problems certainly that Jeb Bush is going to have uh, should he, and it looks like he will run in 2016.